fiddlesticks. Crossy Posse Packer Nation! Welcome to another episode of Podcast, the podcast where you don't have to be a Packers fan, but it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom. How many more NFC Championship losses can we really take as a fan base, as a team, as a people? I don't know. Grassi and today we'll be breaking down the Green Bay Packers loss to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the NFC Championship game. 31 to 26. Before we get to that one, do a big shout and thank you to some brand new patrons and YouTube members. First, over on the Patreon side of things, we have Andrew B. and Mark Schoenhalls. A big shout and thank you to you. And over on the YouTube side of things, we have Andrew B. Sports. We have Jeff Lachance. We have Colby Renfro. We have I Starbuck. We have Dark Ash 150. We have John Wickerink. We have Jeremiah Morris. We have Shaggy Smeager. We have TJ Longmoney. We have Mr. Yes. Lydia Ramsey. We have Eric the OGLL and Chase Lennon. A big shout out and thank you to you all. So yes, folks, the Green Bay Packers have lost their fourth NFC Championship game in seven years. And it doesn't feel good. (laughs) It really, really doesn't feel good. I mean, I put out a video on Friday. I've been talking about this since we we got to the playoffs, that this was a team, a Green Bay Packers team, that was really just coming together at the right time in which the defense was playing well. We finished top 10. The offense was obviously incredible, finishing at basically top one in nearly every category. Aaron Rodgers, MVP for the year. You have Devontae Adams playing as offensive player of the year. Everything was just clicking. And I said, it didn't matter who came into Lambeau to face the Packers because I was confident that they could beat them. And I was confident basically the entire game. And in the end, it just uh, it just didn't get there. But this game just didn't start well. Obviously, you had the first drive in which the Packers deferred, which was great, in which the Buccaneers were able to get the ball, drive it down the field, and get a quick Mike Evans touchdown on Kevin King, and that wouldn't be the last time that he would get burned uh, before the end of the half. But it was still pretty close between the first quarter and the second quarter. Rodgers was then able to get the ball right before half, and we thought, oh, they were going to score, they were going to go up, and then they were going to get the ball at the start of the second half. This was going to be great. Rodgers throws an interception, in which then it would lead to a Scotty Miller touchdown with nearly no time remaining and no timeouts for the Buccaneers, blowing past Kevin King and leading 21-10 to going into the half. And right from there, obviously Packers fans were like, oh, well, this is, this is bad. This is going to go real, real bad. However, the defense really locked down. They only allowed 10 points in the second half of the game. So honestly, that second half is not on the defense whatsoever. Where we struggled in the second half was the offense. We obviously were able to rally back, and we were able to get within five points. And then it was eight points, and then five points again, and then just just problems all around. Taking a look at the stats, Rodgers, 33 for 48, 346 yards, three touchdowns, and one interception. Absolutely no run game to speak of. Aaron Jones, six for 27, also had two fumbles. One of those was being lost. He also was injured and left the game. Williams, seven for 23. And obviously, the Buccaneers have a great rush defense, and that was on full display today. There were times that we were able to get to the outside. It looked like we were in a groove, and then we got away from it completely. The leading receiver today, MVS, four catches, 115 yards, and one touchdown. A phenomenal game for MVS. Last week, I was like, oh, Al Lazard or MVS, that's be their game. Lazard had the big touchdown. This week, it was all about MBS. Adams still effective, 9 for 67 and 1 touchdown, and Lazard coming in with 3 catches and 62 yards. Now, obviously, coming out of the half, too, the Green Bay Packers struggled, had a big fumble from Aaron Jones, in which then the Buccaneers were able to go up 28 to 10. And that's when I was like, oh, okay, well, this is going to be really, really, really problematic. And they battled back, something that you really haven't seen the Packers do all year. What you've seen is, like, they usually get a lead, like, against the Colts game, and then they wind up giving it up. Or when they get blown out in week six by the Buccaneers, they really never fight back. But they did that, and there were plenty of opportunities for the Packers to win this game. Jair Alexander, for example, 
Two interceptions back to back. Amos also had one as well. And that allowed the Green Bay Packers to not only potentially score some points, also to take a substantial lead. And the offense just could not get it done. Now, there's pointing fingers at Aaron Rodgers. There's pointing fingers at Matt LaFleur. For example, everyone's very upset about Matt LaFleur not going for it on fourth and goal from the eight-yard line, down eight, and instead of opting to kick a field goal. I gotta say, I don't blame them there. At that point, you're ahead of the two-minute warning. You have the two-minute warning to stop it. And they had all three timeouts, and you needed your defense, who had been doing really well to make a stop. And they would have made a stop, too. However, if it wasn't for that defensive pass interference call, which I know a lot of people are upset about, and I gotta be completely honest with you. Were the refs allowing the players to play? Yes, 100%. With that in mind, does it make that defensive pass interference look worse? Sure. But the Green Bay Packers did not lose this game because of the refs. There will be very few times that I come on here and I go, oh, those damn refs. The refs are unfortunately a part of the game, and bad calls are a part of the game. And so in the flow of the game, it might look like, you know, holding on to that jersey you're not going to call stuff that happens on Alan Lazard and which resulted in an interception from Rodgers or whatever. Yeah, it doesn't look great. But at the end of the day, the Green Bay Packers had plenty of opportunities to go ahead in this game and they just couldn't get it done. And a big shout out to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense. They really, really showed why we needed David Bakhtiari here. We struggled on the left tackle. Ricky Wagner struggled on the right tackle. And Rodgers was uncomfortable and had to get the ball out quickly often. Besides the interception, the Buccaneers defense had five sacks compared to our one sack that we had on Brady. And the Buccaneers, Brady 20 for 36, 280 yards, three touchdowns, and three interceptions. By the way, this is his 10th Super Bowl that he is now getting to, which just feels great. Fournette, 12 for 55 and one touchdown. Besides that one drive, they really held Fournette in check. Godwin, five for 110 yards. Evan, three for 51 and one touchdown. And of course, you had Scotty Miller, two for 36 with one touchdown. And so for the most part in the second half, the defense really locked it down. And it was just the offense who didn't get it going. We talked about coming into this game, how both of these sides of the ball were playing so well, right? They were complimenting one another. You didn't see that complimentary action going on here when the offense was doing well the defense was struggling when the defense was doing well the offense was struggling and they just could not get on the same page at all so this will end a very great season for the green bay packers again rogers is going to win his third mvp which is wonderful but of course now things look to the future and of course snippets of aaron Rodgers' press conference is now circulating the internet causing rumors that he might not be back next year and i just want to clear some stuff up here because it's really important one matt lafleur flat out said yes he better be back because he's the heart and soul of this team and he's the mvp of the league so there's definitely no strife there and in the context of what Rodgers was talking about, he was talking about how much it hurts for the older guys, right? The Mason Crosbys himself, as well as guys like Mercedes Lewis, in which this might have been their last chance to get a ring. Tremont Williams, who recently came back to the team. And he flat out said there are a lot of uncertain futures, right? And he said, including myself. I don't think this is an indication that he is not going to play next year. He said that he did need to get away. He needed to clear his head. But considering everything Rodgers has said to this point, there I have very little doubt that he will be back behind center this coming season for the Green Bay Packers. Because one, the Packers flat out can't afford to deal out Rodgers right now. The cap hit would be too much. Two, there's so much uncertainty with Tim Boyle and Jordan Love. They are not immediately moving on for him. And three, the guy just won MVP. Your head coach just said that as well. So I'm not really going to look into this. Rodgers is going to be back. But you have to feel for the guy is that this was probably one of our best chances to get Aaron Rodgers a second ring. Obviously, the Chiefs are playing out of their mind, and there was no guarantee even if we made it to the Super Bowl, we were going to win. But it's just soul-crushing to see this happen over and over and over again. And there is a part of me that's like, you know what, be grateful the fact that we're in the NFC Championship game as often as we are. But you look at this team and the way that it's built, you know, Corey Lindsley is most likely not going to be back, our, our all-pro center. Aaron Jones, Jamal Williams, most likely not going to be back. Mercedes Lewis, most likely not going to be back. Kevin King, definitely most likely not to be back. And, like, this team is going to be different. And, yes, there's young guys who are hungry, who are going to step up. But, you know, it's going to be a challenge. We have a challenging schedule next year. 
And, you know, while LaFleur has done amazing things and they've gone 13-3 two years in a row and back-to-back NFC Championship games, it just seemed like this was our season and the stars aligned. And it's it's a little bit more crushing uh, when it ends like this. You had last year with the 49ers game, we ran into a buzzsaw. And I had very little optimism heading into that. 2016, the run the table season. Every week, I was just like, oh my God, I was so grateful just to have it. 2014, that's a whole nother ball game. But this one, since 2014, this one I thought we had the best shot at winning. It was at home. We finally got one. And we just came up short. So, this one's going to hurt. And LaFleur said it was going to hurt. Roger said it was going to hurt. And for this Packers fan base, it's going to hurt. And the only thing we could do now is look ahead to the offseason and just try to do it again next year. But that's a lot easier said than done. Well, congratulations to the Buccaneers and Tom Brady. They played better football today, and they are most definitely deserving of going to the Super Bowl. So not going to wish you luck, but, you know, you did it. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. You can always find me at TomGrassyComedy.com or TomGrassyComedy, all social media see down below. Check out podcasts on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play Music, Spotify, and, of course, YouTube. And a big shout-out and thank you to all the patrons over at Patreon.com slash TomGrassyComedy and the YouTube members. But thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom Grassy. And as always... Go Pack Go.